Ah, good. Yes, nearly. Lever? No. <laughs> Contact? Yes, yes. El go for elbow lock. Go for elbow lock. <laughs> good girl. Wonderful. This series is about the male dancer, how fit and disciplined he has to be, and the many different types of work he has to do. This second program is about a very important part of his work, partnering, or what we call double work with a female dancer. I want to tell you about the physical work involved and about the emotion and relationship between them, and also how in the history of ballet, our role in a partnership has changed from being secondary to the ballerina to being equal with her. Just bend down, straight down. At the Royal Ballet School in London, preparation for lifting starts in the first year. But it will be some years before partners are used. At this stage, the boys all just the learn the basic principles of lifting. Feel a nice round shape, all the way, nice and round. After wooden poles, the boys graduate to metal weights. Good. Nice high elbow action. And it's only after years of this work that they are allowed to try their first partnering with girl students. And easy. And go for elbow lock, Kevin. It's a risky elbow business for both partners. And injuries must not happen. Uh, <laughs> There's too much air between her hip bones and the palm of your hand. Really feel the whole bone. In fact, there's a nice ridge there. It almost like somebody made it, especially for this grip. Feel it on the heel of your hand. In a partnership, there must be the physical chemistry and the physical rapport. That only comes with ceaseless work and practice to make double work seem effortless, spontaneous, and emotionally and physically right. Good. Let go of that hand. Okay, sure. you're all right, love. Don't worry. Bad partnering can destroy a great dancer's performance. Good partnering can inspire a ballerina to heights she might not otherwise reach. Great partners are treasured by ballerinas. Some dancers, like Desmond Kelly of the Sadler's Wells Royal Ballet, have earned the respect and affection of every ballerina their partner because of the sense of security they give and because of their dignity and distinction as artists. Desmond Kelly partners Galina Samsua in the Springwater's Pavilion. The traditional view of the male dancer as partner is of the man as a princely, noble cavalier, 
supporting the ballerina but somehow keeping in the background. This is a view of the princess we see in the classical ballets of the 19th century. Ballets like Swan Lake and Sleeping Beauty, when the ballerina was the most important figure and the male dancer had to keep at a discreet distance. When the time came for a pas de deux, he was there to support and show off the ballerina. Up the back! Here the boys of the Royal Ballet School are learning to support the ballerina as she goes into what we call a fish dive. Good! Fish dives are a very important part of one of the finest examples of 19th century partnering. The grand pas de deux from the last act of Sleeping Beauty. I'm partnering Antoinette Sibley of the Royal Ballet.
answer will continue in a moment. Dancer. Nearly a hundred years later, here is what you can expect to see as a male dancer's role in a partnership in a ballet today. This is the end of the first act of Kenneth Macmillan's ballet Meierling, the tragic story of the suicide pact of Rudolf, the drug-addicted, depraved crown prince of Austria and his mistress. Macmillan's acrobatic and passionate choreography produces a sort of double work that in its explicit sexuality and technical complexity would have been unthinkable even 20 years ago. The end of Act One is a night of Rudolf's arranged royal marriage to Princess Stephanie. As opposed to the grace and harmony of Sleeping Beauty, this double work expresses a dark and ugly side of human nature. David Wall as Crown Prince Rudolf and Wendy Ellis as Princess Stephanie. But even in the last century, one great choreographer was trying to create more important roles for the male dancer. Maybe because he was himself a great dancer. He was my fellow countryman, August Bonneville. In his ballets, the relationship was much more honest. It was a much more real partnership. The male dancer and the ballerina dancing together. In Bonneville's double work for his Danish company, the men had to do very few of those lifts and supporting holes you saw in Sleeping Beauty. Much more there was a sense of two artists, two people working together. Here's a lovely duet 
from Bonneville's Kermessen in Bruges. You can see how the dancing appears to be much more shared between the boy and the girl, and how the interest and emotional quality of the dance is much more of a kind of happy conversation between two young people. My partner is Liz Jeppesen of the Royal Danish Ballet. Kermessen in Bruges, a very typical patheter by August Bonneville. But Bonneville, in trying to make the man an equal partner, was ahead of his time. He was part of the Romantic movement, but in other Romantic ballets, you can see how the ballerina was still the center of attention. And it was a man's job to make her seem like a dream image, a piece of mist, an unattainable or floating being who the male dancer caught but could not hold. Today in productions of Giselle, you can see this in the second act, the hero Albrecht comes to a glade near a lake at midnight. There he sees the ghost of Giselle, a peasant girl whom he has loved and betrayed and who has died for love of him in the first act. Giselle appears to him like a piece of night mist. Today's versions of the ballet are able to stress how weightless and intangible she seems because of the sort of partnering that has been developed by the Soviet ballet. 
high lifts in which the ballerina must appear to float in the dancer's arms. This is in fact much more elaborate and much more acrobatic than was the original style, but the image is the same. Giselle becomes like a dream to Albert. In Russia today, a partnership of long-standing and huge importance is that of Ekaterina Maximova and Vladimir Vasilyev. Both were schooled in Moscow and both came to early fame at the Bolshoi Ballet. They are now its leading stars. There is a remarkable sympathy and physical rapport between them. A partnership like this transcends all thoughts of technique. The dancer will be instinctively aware of his ballerina's center of gravity. In his holds and lifts, she will remain perfectly in balance. He will make her look feather light. His steps will match perfectly to hers.
Here are two brilliantly gifted dancers, Noella Pontois of the Paris Opera Ballet and Fernando Bojones of the American Ballet Theatre, in a sparkling showpiece for the ballerina and the male dancer, one showing off the other, the Grand Pas Classique, choreographed by Viktor Gesovsky. Partnering requires the most intense sympathy between the two dancers if it is to work properly. A sympathy that is both emotional and physical. But this chemistry is really hard to define. In this century, there have been only a few great partnerships out of thousands. Sometimes two dancers are happily partners because of a similarity in physique or of dance style. Sometimes their two temperaments complement each other, but sometimes there is a contrast between them in schooling, and even of age, which strikes some sort of spark. This is what happened with Marco Fontaine, when at the age of 43, she found a new partner in the 24-year-old Rudolf Noria. Their backgrounds were very different, but their combined temperaments on stage, Fontaine's very reserved and musical manner, and her dramatic sensitivity, with Nureyev's physical fire and no less fiery temperament were a perfect match. We remember the golden years of their partnership 
in Macmillan's Romeo and Juliet. The most obvious inspiration for a pas de deux is a love affair, passionate as in Macmillan's Romeo and Juliet, or tender as in this duet by Roland Petit. The dancers are Dominique Calfuni and Dani Gagnon. It's very romantic, but like Macmillan's work, it's modern. The man is much more than a conventional prop for the girl.
The master choreographer of the 20th century, George Balanchine, expressed many views of a partnership in his ballets. One of the most powerful comes in his ballet, Agon. Balanchine once said ballet was woman. Nevertheless, he wrote exciting roles for the male dancer and maintained a harmonious relationship between men and women, as you can see in this pedido danced by Allegra Kent and Arthur Mitchell. Here is American classical dancing at its most intense. Both artists are products of the same school and company, and both completely in tune with the tremendous demands of their choreography. Balanchine made American classical dancing. He was born and trained in Russia, but his great achievement was to take all these traditional classical attitudes and develop them for the United States in the 20th century. The result is dancing of great clarity and power. Next, an extraordinary view of Western civilization and its impact throughout man's history. Triumph of the West, next.